Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Let's start by defining what blockchain apps are. To be clear, by referring to an application or an app, we don't only mean a smartphone app. We're utilizing the dictionary definition of the term, which is a program or a piece of software designed to fulfill a particular purpose of the user. It can refer to a desktop computer program or a mobile app, but we'll also include dApps and some utility and backend applications. Although our focus will be primarily on apps that are built on a blockchain, we'll also include ones that help you interact with distributed ledgers. We're not going to dwell too much on smart contracts as we consider them more of a building block than a computer app. What is the difference between a smart contract and dApps? A smart contract is a small piece of code executed on the blockchain in a decentralized fashion. Essentially, it's a logical contract that comes to life when the predetermined set of conditions is met. What's beautiful about the concept is that it doesn't require any trust. It's executed automatically and there's no cost associated with that process. In addition, the design of a smart contract should be simple and serve only one function. There also shouldn't be too much logic in such a contract. The more complex the system is, the more room for mistakes there is. Therefore, a smart contract should use a simple scripting language that can be easily reviewed, verified, and validated. A contract that is too complex will simply not scale on the blockchain. DApps, on the other hand, are entire infrastructures that can actually be built on several smart contracts. These are decentralized, peer-to-peer -peer applications that do not run on a single system or server. Although there might be a centralized server involved, it is not used to house the application, but merely to help it interact with the blockchain. If the server goes down, the application remains operable, as the data is coming straight from the blockchain. Moreover, a smart contract doesn't need to have a user interface, but a dApp usually does. Although we still haven't seen a breakthrough success for blockchain apps, there are actually a few different solutions already available. They all serve different purposes, from simple utilities through games, even exchanges to social networks. Among utilities, we should definitely mention tools such as MetaMask, Status, or Coinbase Wallet, formerly known as Toshi. MetaMask is simply a browser plugin that allows you to interact with Ethereum inside your favorite browser. It makes it possible to run Ethereum dApps in the browser without running a full Ethereum node, and the goal is for everyone to access Ethereum easily. MetaMask also allows people to get, receive, or send Ethereum directly by buying it or sending it to a target public key. Status and Brave are browsers that help users interface with various blockchains. Status is a mobile-focused app with the possibility for messaging and sending funds through messengers. Additionally, it makes it relatively easy to access other dApps such as Argon, Ethlance, or Gnosis, but also to develop and share your own dApps. Brave is primarily a desktop and mobile browser with a focus on speed, privacy, and security, with the added option of supporting publishers by token micropayments. Blockchain-based games is one application of DLT that has gained significant public recognition. Blockchain games, as the name suggests, are games that use blockchains to power at least part of their gameplay. Whereas in traditional games, all player information is stored on a centralized server owned and operated by the developer. A blockchain game saves its status and items on a decentralized ledger that is especially important when it comes to the possession of unique in-game items. Probably the most well-known blockchain game is CryptoKitties that allows you to breed distinct and completely unique digital cats using smart contracts. Another interesting example includes EOS Knights, a mobile app that runs on EOS. A notable example of how blockchain can be utilized in a gaming context is Decentraland, a virtual reality platform built on Ethereum. All assets inside Decentraland, including real estate, are non-fungible and are permanently owned by their buyers. The platform also has its own ERC-20 tokens called MANA. Even though the world is still not accessible for users, if it launches, it could serve as an interesting game development platform. When it comes to exchanges operating on a blockchain, for the purpose of this video, we'll ignore all the centralized exchanges and focus on decentralized ones. Even though a fully decentralized exchange still remains an idealistic vision due to its issues with scalability and interacting with fiat currencies, a few partially decentralized exchanges exist. Their primary focus lies in making peer-to-peer -peer transactions without having to entrust digital assets to a third-party service. Some examples include Shapeshift.io, Altcoin.io, or Changely, which aggregates prices from different exchanges. Last but not least, let's look into social platforms. Typically, blockchain-based social media emphasizes privacy, lack of censorship, and has a built-in token integration. 
A true unique selling point for decentralized social platforms is the fact that the users really own their own data and, more importantly, content. If you consider social media giants such as Facebook or YouTube, the creators there do not really own their content. The platform can decide to take it down, block it in certain territories, demonetize, or block comments. DLT-based social platforms emphasize content ownership and lack of censorship. The network that has received probably the most notoriety was Steemit, that promised to revolutionize content monetization. As of 2019, it's hard to tell that the revolution has happened, but the platform remains active. Other examples include Indros, Minds, or Pipeth. Many of those networks require using MetaMask, a dedicated DAP browser, or sometimes use their own dedicated desktop app. In a few moments, we'll investigate the potential areas of interest when it comes to blockchain apps. But right now, let's analyze the underlying architecture. The most popular protocols are Ethereum and EOS. It comes as no surprise that most blockchain apps are built on Ethereum, but it is EOS dApps that are more popular with the users. Ethereum runs on a fully decentralized application platform that runs on a proof-of-work consensus model, while EOS runs on a delegated proof-of-stake. It is sometimes said, however, that EOS gives up a large portion of decentralization in order to facilitate scalability and speed of processing. For Ethereum, the primary development tool is their own programming language, Solidity. There's an argument that Solidity is reminiscent of JavaScript and generally uses a lot of Java inside of its ecosystem. This makes it easier for new developers to adapt and participate in Ethereum. EOS, on the other hand, is primarily focused on C++, but it can also take advantage of any web assembly language, which some argue lowers barrier to entry for developers even more. As of Q1 2019, Tron has also emerged as a viable competitor to the two aforementioned DAP platforms. Justin Sun, who leads the Tron project, recently quoted a DAP review report stating that Tron has indeed become the most popular DAP platform among users. If you want to check out our episode on Tron, click here. So, in what areas do blockchain-based apps have the most promise? Currently, the most popular category with developers is gaming but the users themselves are now really interested in storage. When it comes to storage, the advantages of blockchains are evident. The permanent immutable ownership and distributed storage has many benefits. Adding the ability to offset storage costs by participating in the network as a node can make it even more attractive. It really shouldn't come as a surprise, especially considering that the file storage and file sharing were the first real-life use cases for decentralized technologies. It was after all, years before blockchain even became a thing, that file sharing services such as Kaza or BitTorrent were incredibly popular among users. Because storing data on the blockchain itself is quite expensive, decentralized storage is being investigated as a potential solution. It lets you store application code and data off the main blockchain in nodes connected to the main blockchain. Instead of nodes storing everything, they only hold data that is frequently requested on the network and leave other data in the cloud. As mentioned before, another interesting use case for DLT is blogging and content creation. Even though Steam and DTube had probably the most mainstream success as blockchain-related content platforms, the real advantage DLT brings to creators is content ownership and copyright protection. If you consider recent YouTube content ID exploits, such as a YouTube musician having their own song struck down by content ID after someone reposted the song, having the ability to immutably prove content ownership would be a massive advantage for creators. Another fascinating way users can really take advantage of immutability is charity. A big concern with big charitable organizations is where the money you donated ends up. It is also an argument frequently used by people who oppose certain charitable organizations. We sometimes see claims that so-and-so has built a mansion from the proceeds of a charitable collection. With blockchain, this might no longer be the case. Imagine that you're paying with a crypto token and then you can precisely track what is happening with your donation. One more interesting application that we should look into is employment. The Indoors app is considered to be a blockchain version of LinkedIn, where skills are validated anonymously by other participants. Then they are confirmed publicly on a candidate's profile. In another example, the distributed nature of a network makes it possible for freelancers and contractors to cooperate seamlessly without an intermediary. Of course, there are still many challenges connected to the full development of blockchain-based apps. After all, there are still reasons why we haven't seen any mainstream adoptions. 
Some of those challenges involve having to use a MetaMask or a dedicated browser to access some of those services. Others might include the necessity to hold certain tokens in order to interact with the app. But the biggest challenge by far when it comes to blockchain apps is scalability. Ethereum, for example, is still relatively slow as an app platform because of its proof-of-work consensus model. There are currently multiple ideas on how to overcome the issue while maintaining decentralization. These solutions include sharding, which is breaking the network into smaller blockchains to distribute computational load, as well as sidechains designed to offload some of the computational burden outside of the main blockchain. One other solution that Ethereum is exploring heavily at this moment is Casper, which is an attempt by Ethereum to move to a proof-of-stake consensus protocol. EOS, on the other hand, which is clearly optimized for speed, is often criticized for being susceptible to security risk and reliability issues. A delegated proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, which is based on only 21 delegated block producers could be prone to a 51% attack if a hacker managed to take control of only 11 blocks. Which brings us to another valid concern, security. One of the biggest issues here has to do with smart contracts. Due to their immutability, which is of course one of their unique selling points, if a vulnerability is discovered in a contract after it was published to the blockchain, it will be extremely difficult to fix. One last potential issue that we should address when talking about blockchain apps is cross-chain compatibility. In order for the users to get most from the applications, they need to be able to communicate with the outside world. Because of the competitive nature of this early blockchain market, it is difficult for developers of various application platforms and ecosystems to work together to ensure compatibility. There are a few solutions available, but the general consensus is the lack of interoperability is one of the obstacles to adoption. All in all, blockchain apps still have a huge promise to revolutionize digital user experience in multiple fields. Our team here at Blockchain Central is of course most interested in developments connected to content creation, but we're also closely following all the other developments. So if you wanna stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is this supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. See you in the next one.